Greetings, citizens! Just a guy's arrived, and we're back to Zero Escape. Nine hours, nine persons, nine doors. We are... I... I didn't... The checkpoint thing, I didn't... Anyway, we got... I'm still not totally over that ending, um, but I have taken us back to... Um, here, where this branch was, which I guess isn't really important, necessarily, it looks like? It looks like this is really the key thing. But, um, and it looks like here we can still fuck it up and go down that path. But, regardless, um, here's where the first branch happened, so here's where we're starting. Now, seven, snake, clover, and ace. They would go through door five. Lotus, Santa, Jude, and me. We'll go through door four. Are these really the teams I want? Beyond door five is what remains of the ninth man. I never want to see that thing again, but something's telling me it'd be a good idea to examine the course. Even just a little closer. Well, we did that and we got nothing from it. So, of course, door five, I would be going with Lotus and Santa. Now, why does he care? I could bring June with me through door five, but that means you have to see the body there. I want to put her through that. Okay, it was torn. Should I sign on or go through the forest? Should I stop and sit on the right? No, 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 it spoke up. All right, then. It seems we reach a conclusion. Shall we go? He began to walk toward door five. I'm going toward door five. Clover and Snake follow, with seven a short distance behind. Ready to go in there, over there, too, right, Snake? The door is not going anywhere. Slow down. Hi, which door? I decided that door four would be fine. I'll go through door four with Lotus, Santa, and June. Every day's great with our friend June. There's nothing to worry about. I just need to stay by her side. June, Akane Kurashiki. It should be fine. It's no problem this way. I should see the other four off. He made no shows of affection, but Junpei saw her as something more than just a friend from his childhood. Looks like Ace and the others are going. We watched the other four walk toward their door. Ace, Nick, Clover, and Seven. Hmm. Junpei said nothing as they left. Goodbye! Before long, they had reached door five. They talked to one another for a few seconds, saying things Junpei could hear, and then laid their hands, one by one, on the scanner panel of the red. Now then. Ace grabbed the lever, his face tight with determination. He turned over his shoulder to look at Junpei and his companions. Goodbye. Be careful. As Ace pulled the lever, the door swung open. The mouth of a great, hungry beast. Ugh. So oh, horrible. Beyond the door, Junpei knew lay the sad remains of the ninth man. It did not surprise him that Ace, Clover, and Seven hesitated. The body was not a pleasant thing. What are you doing? We need to hurry. Snake had no such problems, as his blindness made him immune to the horror. He stepped through the door, his feet making a wet in the pool of blood. Nick, your shoes! It's fine, hurry. Or are you planning on dying with everyone else? I assume you haven't forgotten the door only remains open for nine seconds, have you? Sorry, Snake. Let's go. The three remaining steeled themselves and stepped through the door. Door five swung shut, closing with the heavy finality of metal upon metal. What is this game with that phrase, metal on metal? It's really, really into robot mechs, we'll call it. Junpei and his compatriots scrambled to the door. Hey, how is it over there? Did you find anything? At least say something, will you? Something's beeping. Just like before. Do you think they're okay? 
Jun's face showed her concern more plainly than her words ever could. <sighs> Ooh. Ugh. Almost as though in response to her question, a voice rang out from the other side of the door. It was Seven. Hey, there it is. It's gotta be that dead thing. Come on, get over there. We gotta authenticate. Yeah. The beeping stopped. Sighs of relief. <sighs> We're audible even through the heavy door. Ew. Looks like it stopped. Pei and his companions leaned away from the door and breathed a collective sigh of relief of their own. Hey, guys, are you doing all right over there? They heard Seven's voice, but it wouldn't hurt to be sure. Yeah, we're fine. Despite the recent danger, Clover's voice was as bubbly as ever. Oh, hey, I'm gonna tell you about this whole dead thing, okay? The dead is just like the red, but the color is different. You know how the red was red? Well, the dead is blue. Other than that, it's just like the red. Authenticating is the same, too. Awesome, thanks, that helps a lot. Well, we should probably move on now. You be careful out there. Aren't you, wow. The mood feels really different. Like, it felt like there was more hostility or like unease the other way around, you know? I feel like this is the one you're supposed to choose. Pei and the others left door five and headed toward door four. Yeah, now it's our turn. I'll go first. They stood in front of the red and placed each of their hands upon it. Boop, 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 boop. Four asterisks appeared on the screen. Junpei grabbed the lever and turned around. Okay, we ready? Yo, jar. Let's go. None of them looked particularly optimistic, but their faces were set. Junpei nodded to them and turned back toward the red. All right. Go. With strength and determination, he pulled the lever. Run! Ooh. The four of them leapt through the door together. The moment they had passed through it, each heard a cold electronic sound coming from their left wrist. Damn! Not here! In the center of each bracelet, a red skull appeared and began to flash. Let's count it down. The detonators countdown had begun. The long moment that each of them spent staring at their wrists. The number door behind them had closed. The sound of metal on... Metal on metal? Again? What'd I tell you? The sound of metal on metal reverberating down the hallway. We turn to a book. We need to hurry and find the device. How would I know? I already am. They began to run. I was looking frantically for the device that was the key to their salvation. The hallway they found themselves running down was a long one, easily 300 feet in length. On the right side of it stood a series of wood doors, all nearly identical. <laughs> if they had taken time to think, they would have likely discerned that the doors lead to cabins. Don't tell me the dead is in one of those rooms. Oh no, well, how many rooms do you think there are? Pepe was too frightened to count properly, but his best guess there were seven or eight of them. Ah, uh, fuck. We don't have time to count! A one, a, a two... Jopei ran to the nearest door. We just need to open them all. Grab the knob and shook it hard. <laughs> it won't open. It didn't feel locked, more like someone had hammered an iron plate over the side of the door. 
Jupiter turned around to find another door and saw that his companions had already rented doors of their own. They did not seem to be having any more success than he had. Their own words continued, confirmed, not continued, confirmed his fears. This one's not moving. Same here. It's not moving. June was the last to speak up, damn it. Ah. Oh. As Junpei looked in her direction, his eye caught something he hadn't noticed before. A small red blinking light. There it is, at the end of the hallway. Run! <laughs> Even as he yelled, he ran. He grabbed Santa, Lotus, and June and pulled them toward... How? Santa called out to them as he ran. Hey, how many more seconds do we have? How would I know? Wow, where did that one come from? How would I know? Our time limit is 81 seconds. I'm... I'm asking you how many seconds we have left. In all likelihood, Junpei figured nearly a minute had already passed since the door had closed behind them. That was true. Urgency foremost in all of their minds, they had arrived at the end of the hallway. The dead sat on the left wall, licking almost tauntingly at them. Hayaku! It's the dead, get over here. Lupin grabbed hold of the machine, his hands slick with sweat and shaking. He slammed his hand against the scanner panel. Come on, everyone. The other three quickly followed suit. With a grunt, Santa yanked the lever downward. Yay! Phew, looks like it stopped. His hands are beginning to steady. Junpei wiped away some of the sweat that had beaded on his forehead. As they caught their breath, the four companions began to look around. There is another door at the end of the hallway. You can see a heavy looking set of double doors. Set it to the walls of the hallway on the other side of the door were two smaller ones. Try this one first. And of course, one of How many times had come across similar doors with similar results? He wondered. Damn it. Or perhaps he corrected himself. More a lack of respect. Whatever the reason, the door remained firm and unyielding and refused to allow Junpei or anyone else massage. Keyhole. Above the keyhole was a small symbol engraved in the brass. What's this mark? Male? Or m that's Mars, right? He wasn't quite sure what to make of it and stared at it for a moment in confusion. It was June who corrected him. No, not exactly. That's probably the symbol of Mars. Well, technically they are the same symbol. I saw a number of similar symbols near the main stairway. Symbols of the solar system. Oh, that's right. Sun. Saturn. And Eeyores. At least that's what I'm assuming. But this isn't a man symbol. A symbol for Mars. I think so, yes. I see. Santa. When Junpei and Jun talked, Santa had disappeared. They turned to find him some distance down the hallway. He had gone to check the other doors. Eventually, he reached the last of them and jogged back. It took him only a moment to catch his breath again. Yeah, so, so I looked at the place over. Here's the deal. No, the other door's open. And that must mean... They only have two more doors. Lotus examined the doors on the other side of the larger double door. Each one had a metal plate attached. Maybe it's the room number. The door on the left is B92. I'll be your B92, if you know what I mean. I don't know what I mean, so you'll have to explain it to me first. And the one on the right says B93. All right, let's open them. I'll open B92. 
Okay, I'll get B93 then. Junpei put his hand on the doorknob. Santa moved to the other door. They'd made it through the numbered door alive. There was nothing more to be afraid of. Ha <laughs> ha, if you only knew. Junpei and Santa looked at each other and nodded. One, two, three. In unison, pushed against their respective doors. And promptly found themselves in a new room. June followed Junpei as three he threw open his door. He turned around and saw the door on the other side was open as well. Through the door was another person, his mouth agape. Santa. Hey, uh, it opened. Hey, oh, it opened. Yeah, it did. Junpei and Santa looked at each other. I expect that. Who oh, so is you? Lotus's calm voice broke into their thoughts. Maybe this is all part of Zero's plan? Sam Joy being treated like someone's puppet. As she headed for room 93, Lotus continued. Well, now we have these two rooms. I'm sure there's something in there that will help us get out of here. Let's find it. Santa and I will search this room. You two take the other one. All right. Okay. Oh, we're in. Oh my god, this is... This is a big... Seek a way out. But this would be the first one of this son of a bitch. Um, Vase. That Vase looked expensive. I wonder how much we could get for it. Are you gonna steal it? <laughs> a weird looking picture. You think it's an abstract painting or something? It looks kind of like a it looks kind of like a demon with an elephant like nose sucking on a human being's brain. Where the hell did that come from? What's your brain made of? Can't say I'd mind finding out a little more about what goes on in there. Hey we're looking for some sort of weird black and white design. Looks like there's room on the right side of the picture. Oh a room Uh, it's a shower, I guess. There's a shower. Nothing special about it. The blue platform protruding next to the knobs. It's for putting soap. I use a shower once, so I know. <laughs> okay, that's the shower knob. Let's see if anything happens when we turn it. No, water's coming out. Uh, that's the bathroom wall. There are square tiles all over it. Jumpy, do you think there might be something on the shower curtain? Uh, well, maybe. Want to try closing it? There doesn't seem to be anything here. Yeah, you're right. Well, uh, let's go back. Um. Uh. Shower head. It's been a long time. Now let's check the toilet. There's nothing there. The tank's empty too. There isn't even any water in it. Collection of full and partially depleted rolls of toilet paper. Someone was well prepared. Nothing too suspicious about it. Nope. Uh, shower curtains, huh? Let's try closing it. Okay, now we're looking at it from this side. The full expanse against all water for There's nothing suspicious. It's just a normal old shower curtain narrow shower and I'm standing in it with June. Mm, this is awkward. Time to open the curtain! Uh, yeah, why don't we go back to the living room? Okay, let's go back. Alright, so we got a lot out of that. Jimmy, where are you going? I'm, I was thinking of going over to Lotus's room. Maybe you could look around here a little more before you go. There's a lot for me to do here by myself. Alright. Well, I was actually just not sure what that door was, so, uh... It's a table made of wood. Hey, there's something here. Looks like a box of matches. I'll take it. It's a box of matches. There are matches inside, obviously. Junpei looked blankly down at what he was holding, then up at June. Oh, yeah. 
I was, I, had, I was wondering about this. Oh yeah, how's your fever? You feeling better now? Yes, I'm fine. You certainly looked fine. Well, let me see your forehead. Lupe held his hand on her forehead for a few seconds. Oh! I guess it really has gone down. Are you worried about me? Yes? Yeah, I guess I am. <laughs> you blushed and giggled. By the way, Jumpy? Hmm? How did you end up here? What do you mean? I told you earlier, didn't I? There was a man. There was a man with a gas mask when you got home at night. You inhaled some white smoke and passed out. When you woke up, you were on the deck. Damn straight. But is that really the truth? What? Jumpy, are you hiding something from me? No, why would I? What the fuck? Well, if you think about it, this is awfully suspicious. I mean, why would two childhood friends bump into each other in a place like this? I mean, she's it's a very fair point. Hey, I could ask you the same thing. Are you hiding something? What would I hide? I don't know, anything. I mean, you're hiding it. How would I know? I mean, like, the number of men I've dated? <gasps> His heart stumbled over itself. Do you want to know? Uh, ooh. he had to admit he was a little curious. Don't worry. He smiled at him. Only 18. I'm <laughs> zero. Yeah, I guess I just haven't mis met Mr. Right yet. She looked a little embarrassed and scratched the back of her head in a desperate attempt to seem nonchalant. See, she <clears throat> coughed quietly in much of the same way. Anyway, I am not hiding anything. Just like you, Jumpy. When I woke up, I was on the deck. Well, you do have a point. I mean, why did Zero pick us? We haven't seen each other since elementary school. Hmm, I wonder. Do nodded, and for a few moments she had a faraway look of someone deep in thought. Look for what connects the victims. That will lead you to the culprit. Do you remember Seven saying something like that? Yeah, I do, so? Well, that's what I'm saying. I think this must all have something to do with a classmate of ours. You got any ideas who it might be? No, nothing. Oh. Well, if it had something to do with school, I guess it could be one of our teachers, or maybe the principal. Or the janitor, or the lunch lady. Uh, no, I can barely remember any of them. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. When Pei went back to searching, feeling unpleasant and confused. Maybe a little aroused. Elementary school. I immediately regret making that joke. I am so sorry. Was there anything strange that had happened in elementary school? As he searched the room, he continued to rack his brain. I mean, fucking rabbit murder? You're not gonna bring up rabbit murder yet? Nope. No rabbit murder. All right, well, I guess we'll um get out of this room next time, citizens, because... For now, I'm I'm just really afraid that it's gonna it's it's gotta have to be. Uh, well.